Neo Defcon was last week, and, 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 and I actually got no bullish news for you. <laughs> um, the only bullish thing I seen was Nash is releasing their exchange. They announced their release date, but I already did a video on that, so I'll leave the link in the description below for you. Truthfully, today, guys, is going to be about EOS. You shouldn't be surprised. It's my favorite project, and crypto was very boring last week. Not that much going on. I mean, Binance released their decentralized exchange. I'm not, I don't know. Too many people covered it already. Uh, they also delisted Substratum. I think that was like two weeks ago. And what else? Price of crypto went up a little bit. Now, EOS has been taking the lead in that whole crypto rise. Now, as you can see here, Bitcoin at the time of recording this video is still trying to push past that uh, 4,000 mark. Don't know if it's going to be able to do that. EOS trying to push past the $4 mark. I mean, in a week's period of time, we've seen it go up almost 40%, maybe somewhere in that range between like 30 and 40 something percent. I'm not really sure. I'm not going to do the math right now, but last week it was 280 when I did my video and now it is sitting past 380. So that is a pretty nice rise, but I keep most of my EOS staked. I like to be active on the network. So I'm not going to play the game of, you know, unstaking, waiting three days for that to happen and then trying to get it at a lower price. That's just not a game I'm going to play. But let's get into the news now. Right. So just a little cool. We got this uh, video from Juicy J called Let Me See over two million views within a week. And it's featuring Kevin Gates and Lil Skies. And they got EOS IO token in the video. Now, they also got Bitcoin here at the top. It says Bitcoin D. So I hope they're not talking Bitcoin Diamond. Got EOS written all over it. EOS over here. EOS over here. And they even got Everpedia and IQ. So I found that to be really interesting. Everybody already talked about this. So you might have seen this. But if not, this is pretty cool. Probably was just like the director or a producer. Or they probably even got like some kids and said, yo, can y'all just write all over the board and make it look like something scientific? And they're like, all right, well, we're going to write some crypto stuff. But at the same time, you never know if it's Juicy J, Kevin Gates or Lil Skies that's invested into EOS. And they specifically put that up there. Who knows? Right now, Effect AI, they actually announced that they are going to be leaving the Neo blockchain and building on EOS instead. And um, I find this kind of ironic right after Neo DevCon. A week later, we're finding out that projects are leaving NEO. It's crazy. We even seen some very bullish crypto YouTubers, right? Like Chico Crypto, no longer holding NEO. What is going on with NEO? If you hold NEO, please let me know. I don't want to bash the project. I used to be a NEO fan, but personally, there were a couple of things that I've seen that I just wasn't a fan of. You know, I just wasn't a fan of anymore. And I landed on EOS. That's it. <laughs> Murder She Wrote after that, man. Now, they um, left for a couple of reasons. They said, you know, one of the reasons that they were on NEO to begin with was for the free transactions for the end users and high transaction throughput, multiple programming languages. And then they say, however, in reality, things turn out differently. And the current state of NEO is not up to speed with what we need to be able to build out our network. So then they also go ahead and say, besides C Sharp, you know, all of the stuff is quite immature immature it's not ready and then they go on to talk about you know how they also look they say they dove deep into protocols like ethereum komodo tezos and a handful of others so they didn't simply just land on eos they actually really did some deep research and they chose eos and i think a lot has to do with them going to the hackathon and seeing the community man i'm sure that this made them really excited to be there and to be mentors and stuff when i watch the stuff for hackathon and see these projects coming out i get excited myself so it's pretty interesting to see that coming out now there is a platform that is also moving on to eos that has over 300 million users crazy and that is tapa talk what who Yes, Tapa Talk. <laughs> um, they are, I think what they pretty much got going on is like they're like a hosting site for these um, forum communities and like Google Play type stuff. Now, I seen, let's see, uh, maybe under Tapa Talk groups. 
yeah, they have a whole bunch of things like you can do some hosting here. They got their whole pricing listed out free, basic and premium. And um, they had like a little interview going on with Crypto Insider and they asked them a couple of questions and they said, <laughs> they said Tapa Talk has 300 million users and yet we've never heard of them before. How is this possible? And they said, we're a niche, we're a niche service straight up. So they kept it 100. We're a niche service. They're not like just the mainstream frontline like Reddit, their niche service, and they provide an integrated interface and a mobile app for community communities from around the world that before often time were being hosted on local servers. So I feel like they probably do a lot of hosting. I haven't done enough um, research and deep dive into this platform, but what they want to do is actually move their gold points rewards. And it says now placing them on a blockchain will enable micro payments. So they are actually turning their uh, gold points kind of like, I mean, karma or something. I'm not really sure. I don't know everything about Reddit, but they're turning it into a cryptocurrency and they talk about actually putting their gold points on exchanges so it can be more liquid. So people are going to earn cryptocurrency by using their platform. Now, the interesting Interesting thing is that they also mentioned that this was going to be in February. Like, <laughs> look, released later in February. So they're like ready to go. This is something that is going to be popping up pretty soon. I'm excited. You guys let me know. Over 300 million users they're rolling this out to. So, I mean, if 3% of that, <laughs> you know what I mean? If 3% of that is nearly 10 million people, that's crazy. I, I meant to say 1% is only is 3 million people. So if 1% of the users start, you know, really messing with their gold rewards, their gold points, that is a million users or 3 million users, excuse me. So this is definitely going to open up some opportunities for adoption here. I'm excited to see what's going to happen. And what is interesting, right, is because everybody talks about, you know, how expensive resources can be on the network and stuff. They actually were questioned. They're like, man, don't you have to pre-buy about two million worth of EOS tokens, you know, so they could stake on the network and stuff? And they're like, uh, nah, EOS has good APIs. It's scalable and affordable. No, not at all. We had to stake a relatively small amount. It's in five figures. So <laughs> a platform at that large scale, they're talking about <laughs> uh, how it's actually pretty affordable to use EOS as a blockchain for what they're doing. Now, they are talking about competing with Twitter, Reddit, and also um, Steemit. So we're going to see what goes on with this. I'm very interested, and I'll definitely be, be supporting the platform. You know me. I like to su support you know blockchain games, blockchain platforms. You know, right now I use Brave Browser. I try to stay blockchained out if I can, but especially when it comes to EOS. So you guys let me know how y'all feel about that. They have their website you can go to and they have tapx.io, which talks about, you know, identity, reputation, incentive and tokenization. It really goes into their whole thing. I haven't watched this interview with Crypto Beatles, but I will. And the more information that I get, the more I will deliver to you guys. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about was EOS links. So EOS links, they actually announced, um, I think last night, something with their D good standard. They were part of contributing to figuring out the whole D good standard, which is going to bring like non fungible tokens to the network. So, you know, stuff like, uh, things you can use inside of games, uh, tickets to, you know, the movies, tickets to a basketball game. And when I say games before, I meant like video game items, in-game video game items, all those different types of things, and a couple of other things as well. Um, let's see. So it says metadata for templates for 3D and 2D assets, certificate of authenticity, uh, multiple categorized tokens in one token contract, fungible and non-fungible in one contract, and open source. I can't explain what all those things mean to you, so you're probably going to have to <laughs> do a little more research, or I will, and then I'll get it out to you guys, right? And I'll explain whatever this all means, but I do know non-fungible tokens definitely provides some value to cryptocurrency gaming and blockchain gaming. That's what really gets me excited. Now, they also mentioned something else, and I'm going to play this video for you. All right. So go ahead and check it out. It should be about like two to three minutes. We're going to announce this is a longer term effort. It's not going to happen immediately, but we're going to be announcing a fork of EOS with the goal 
of making a simpler, more consumer-friendly version of EOS. Why do we need a fork? Well, you could argue we don't, but we're on the forefront of the usability. We see what is needed on the usability. We understand also how the EOS ecosystem is moving, and we support those changes. But there's certain things that EOS in its current incarnation cannot do and will not do. We need to change the core blockchain into something that can satisfy these criteria. And it's not rocket science, it's just some things. So, what do we need to change? We need to have free accounts with identity. Now, if you create a new app, you are almost every app that you will create will have the following uh, login procedure. Fred Krueger, name, avatar, load your avatar, put your phone number, verify your phone number, get an account. That's how Twitter works, that's how Instagram works, that's how Facebook works, that's how LinkedIn works, that's how Quora works. Every single consumer app works that way. Blockchain should work that way, mm -hmm. right? And if Corey has at Corey Larson, and if I can get at Fred, why do I need a 12-character domain name? I don't. I would like to get at Fred. When Twitter was launched, Jack Dorsey claimed at Jack. Okay? The, when we launched this thing, everybody will be able to claim at Everett. You know, you will be able to claim your own name. Okay? And I think that's a, that's a good reason to get in there, to, to claim your own name. So there will also be the notion of a verified account. Just like there is a verified account in Twitter, you'll be able to verify it. And we don't have to reinvent the wheel here. There's a lot of ways to verify accounts. You can verify it with NetKey, with OnFido, with various things. But this is the core basis, free accounts and identity. The only other thing we want to change in this blockchain is the third thing. We want to get rid of stuff. Yay. OK? Yay. Because yeah. 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 So what do you guys think of that? They're talking about the possibility of creating their own forked chain from EOS. We've seen this happen time and time again. Obviously, there are some things on EOS that still need to be figured out, man. And I think that it will be figured out. A lot of people say stuff like, you can fork the code but you can't fork the community and i'm like uh <laughs> that's not good enough defense all right we need to actually get things right i would like to contribute however i can i'm not sure how i can but we do need to figure certain things out i would like to see you know the names be a lot more um a lot more simple you know there is eos name service so shout out to them you can create multiple different names but it's not as simple as like creating a name on steam you know, on Steam, I'm low key. That's it. Five letters, L O K E Y. It's just like that. So I would like to see that. Um, also, verified accounts. Just having the opportunity to have verified accounts would be nice. Now, when it comes to the whole resources thing, um, I wonder how they're gonna do that. I don't know how they would do that, <laughs> but um, I, I I don't really see that happening. I don't really see EOS being a token that everybody has to use on the applications that are going to be built on it so the whole resource thing about staking and stuff that's for early investors like us that are really heavily into blockchain it's not going to be for the platforms that are built on top of the blockchain all right so i'm not going to get too far into that i just want to hear you guys opinion how do you feel about these sister chains that are forking from eos and also do you think that it will come to this with links i don't know if it will hopefully we upgrade and do what we got to do but Anyway, if you don't have EOS links, they are a really good wallet. I'll leave my link in the description below. And if you, you can actually bring your own um, your own uh, private key into there or you can create a new account. And we both get 25 links tokens. So not really trying to just shill affiliates. But hey, if you don't have it, just give it a try, man. So that's all I got for you today. It is your boy, Low Key. Hopefully this brought you some decent updates on things going on with EOS and cryptocurrency in general. I will see you guys in the very near future. I'm out of here. Peace.